Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. When we last left off, we uncovered a another Guardian Graveyard. I think I can take this down. We uncovered another Guardian Graveyard, as well as the most Korok Seeds in any one area I've ever seen. Just look at that. It's like a, a ring of fire, but with Koroks. And this episode, we're going to be continuing exploring the Hyrule Ridge. Uh, we found a lot of cool stuff. And I've I've had a lot of a lot of my theories as to what what interesting things are different places confirmed. So I'm really getting into the groove of the exploration, which isn't always true because sometimes or isn't always the case because a lot of times I get a little bit discouraged by uh, exploration because there's nothing to really to, to say. You know, like if I commentate it, I'm just saying in the strictest sense of of the the word what I'm doing I just say oh let's go over here and let's find this but no I'm finding things to talk about I am really enjoying exploring and uh, this episode is going to be good I can already feel it so I did say we were gonna fly down to this this ridge there's a bluff uh, we already found Lake Illumini Illuminati but we haven't gone up on the bluffs I don't think we will quite yet uh, I guess we could They're they are isolated uh, but probably not while it's raining because that would be that would be a trial. So I, I want to ride down here I also want to fully explore this mountain uh, not because I, I think there's really anything of, of um, Substance on it, but because I believe there are co more Korok seeds to be had and just as a reminder Because I've been finding this out over the past many episodes I think that we can get every Korok seed in the game. I, I, I really do believe that We've been knocking them out one after another. We're up to like 220 now. And just as a reminder, there are 900 in the game. So 200, uh, so uh, 220 of 900. Actually, that sounds like we have a lot left. And yes, we do. We have 700 left. But that's also over 20% of them completed. Like we've gotten over 20%. So I think it's, I think it's viable at this point that we can get all of them. So I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, let's jump off. And let's go explore that now that it's no longer raining. Climbing up here. I, I ate one of my hasty fried greens. I have I have a recipe, which I, I need to start spamming more. It's just four swift violets and a monster extract at any time of the day will give us uh, a 30-minute ultra hasty elixir or uh, food. And it's... It's like the best thing in the game. I, which I am to the point where I don't think anything could possibly top that. So, it is the best hasty enabler in the entirety of Breath of the Wild. And so I need to start spamming that uh, that recipe. Okay, now that we're up at the top, let's get, eat that or use this and climb this bluff. We haven't seen that many bosses around here, and par that's partially I think because this is kind of an introductory area. If you consider. Uh, the central Hyrule or everything near the Great Plateau is being like if if the difficulty scales harder the the further you go out. Uh, this is probably one of the newer areas. So, oh hello. And so this is still not like it's not super boss territory. This is not Lynel territory. I need to get out of the way. Okay, I would summon. It's down there. Some deserty trees, I guess. Actually, have we been down there? Wait a minute. Yeah, we've been down there. Okay. Gotta make sure. Gotta make sure. Got the man. I I'm so hasty. Look at this. I mean, yes, we get this same buff at nighttime whenever we're wearing the the armor, but still. Wait a minute. Am I in the? I'm on the wrong bu bluff. Oh. Uh. I need to be on that bluff. Oops. Well, I hear Cass. Cass really does travel, doesn't he? Uh, he's somewhere. I'm guessing he's on top of one of the, the mushrooms. If these are mushrooms. They're mushrooms or rocks. It's it's impossible to tell. Whoa. There's Dinral. Okay, let's see if we can climb this. It's getting louder, so I, I presume that's this is where he is. I don't think we can actually climb this, can we? Uh, it's gonna be sketchy. Oh boy. Ah, uh, I'm here. Whew. Now what is this? 
This is weird. There's a gazebo. I use that term very loosely, but this is actually a gazebo. Cass's journal. I leave, be I leave here a record of my search for the ancient songs of Hyrule. The ancient song of Pegos Woods. It seems that a song has been passed down through the ages in Pegos Woods area of Faron. The song references mythical creatures such as dragons and great serpents. I wonder if such cre creatures could really ex have existed, or perhaps they still exist today. Ancient song of the Hyrule West Plains. On the south side of Hyrule, West Hyrule Plains, there is a bridge called Jado Bridge. Near this bridge, there are a number of circular rocks with holes in their centers. Peculiarly, peculiarly enough, these rocks are somewhat are apparently mentioned in an ancient song from the area. Sounds rather odd, but I hope to find more about this ancient rock song. Ancient song of Rabia Plain. Apparently, Rabia Plain in the northern part of Hetano is home to an ancient song about beasts. Rabia Plain is northeast of Kakariko Village. I'll likely stop by the village during my search for the song. Ancient song of Gerudo Tower. I've heard word there is an ancient song about a tall structure called Gerudo Tower. I don't know where this Gerudo Tower is, but mysterious towers have popped up all around Hyrule recently. This Gerudo Tower may be the tower that appeared in the Gerudo region. The ancient song of Kelora Lake. Apparently there is an ancient song about a giant boulder in Kelora Lake in the Faron region. I hear that area is prone to violent thunderstorms. I'll need to prepare before I go searching for the song. And the Horon Lagoon. I hear there is an ancient song about the place in Horon Lagoon. Uh, the winds there are supposed to be very intense. I need to travel the area on foot. Kitano Bay. It seems there's an ancient song about an ollie shaped pillar in the stone water of Kitano Bay. It details something that was hidden there by the Great Calamity before the Great Calamity uh, to be claimed by the Lost Hero. I'm not sure what's hidden here, but if it's meant for a Lost Hero, it must be worth a fortune. Wash's Bluff. I've heard whispers of an ancient song about the Night of the Red Moon, traditionally sung in Wash's Bluff. No one knows why the Red Moon rises, or perhaps what uh, in the span of that night, or what happens in the span of that night. These are all the ancient songs I have discovered. I will continue my journey, hoping the day will come when I can pass them on to the, Hy the, the champion of Hyrule. And that's it. So this just chronicles all of his songs, and here he is. When the Moon Bleeds. Oh. Huh? Excuse me. Was that rough on the ears? Oh. Ah, you've done well climbing all the way up here. I know a song about this place. Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Oh. Excellent. Without further ado. When the moon bleeds and the fiends are reborn, the monks will invite you as they have sworn. But first you must stand on this pedestal bare with nothing between you and the night air. Hmm? When the moon bleeds, I wonder what that means. May the light illuminate your path. Under a red moon. Uh, so we just read that. So we need a blood moon to happen. Can, wait, doesn't warping out cancel the effects of a blood moon? That's gonna be, this is gonna be a bit of a difficult shrine because when a blood moon happens, we only have seconds to warp to Satori Mountain and then fly this way. Okay, well, it's good to keep in mind that there is indeed a shrine on Washa's Bluff. And now let's go to its sister bluff, which I, judging by the looks of it, is going to house a either a Lynel, there's a shrine over there, either a Lynel or perhaps a Talus. And there's some stuff below us, but I don't really care. There's a shrine over there. So let's climb this and see what this place has to offer. Okay, on top of the bluff, what is here? Is there anything? Is there a reason for this place? Oh, there's a st there, Yeah, that's Stone Talus. Right? Am I right? Yeah, this is Stone Talus. Thought so. Yep. Well, let's use... I'm really saving this Power 90 weapon for something special. I don't know what it is, but I'm saving it. It's amazing, and I don't want to let it go to waste. Uh, let's try to get some of our bad weapons out, which means this Royal Halberd is going to go. Okay, let's see if we can stay on. Nope. Okay, come on. Oh. Okay. Dodged it. I'm going to throw another one, but thankfully I am very fast. Stasis. Get on top. There. Perfect. Get up on top. 
Come on. Oh. Okay, well that didn't quite work out as planned. Hit me with your best shot. Get stasis. And that's that counts as an attack, apparently. Get up on top! Get up on top! Ah. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, stasis. Perfect. Die. A terrible death. Come on. Shoot it and shoot it. It was about to knock me off. And that is a stylish kill. I don't usually do stylish kills on, on stone taluses because they're stone taluses. But when you get diamonds, I mean, it's worth it. In fact... Can't take a picture of the diamond. Uh, that's sad. But we got a diamond. Let's throw a marker here. And continue on. Kind of a... Kind of a throwaway bluff. It's not a shrine, but we did see a shrine in the process, so I suppose I shouldn't complain. Okay, back down at the bottom. Let's ride to the shrine. You know, thinking about this and how... Whoa, what is that up there? Oh, just a, just a skull area. But I remember, with how much I've get, been getting input, I remember very early on in the series how angry I was whenever someone spoiled me. And, I mean, I got really upset. And thinking about that... <laughs> okay, let's get off the horse properly. And I've been thinking about that and how... N no one else seems to get this the, as angry as they do, because it's kind of a universal thing as well. Uh, looks like there's, uh, stables. Okay. No one else seems to get that angry about any other game being spoiled. But they do for Breath of the Wild, and... It's kind of weird. Like, even when Skyrim came out, aim for the moment. Even when Skyrim came out, I don't remember people getting that upset. Let's see. Uh... I think. Yeah, this is what we're supposed to do. Stasis it. And shoot it. Here, let's, let's try to, a bomb arrow here. Uh. Oh, this might break it. Uh, did it work? That thing's, oh, that thing's much bigger than I thought it was. That, that's like three times the size I thought it was. But what I was saying. I don't think I've ever seen anyone get as upset as they do about being spoiled for Breath of the Wild as any other game. Like, it's kind of... I don't see why I need to do that. Um, it's kind of crazy how upset people get. Like, even, even myself, it's kind of ingrained. And I guess it's one of those... As, as people have said, it's one of those rare games. Not of a lifetime, but like of a generation. It's... There are very few games that have captivated people like this has, and it, it really speaks to it. I, like, I'm playing it however many months later, and I'm still finding a lot of enjoyment out of it. It's still a fantastic game. I, I'm not bored of it, and by no means have I discovered everything. I've discovered a lot, and actually, I just it kind of struck me how everything you see on this map is something I have discovered on screen in this adventure, which is kind of bonkers, and I don't really believe it, but I've shown everything that I've done, and that's really weird. Okay, where are we going? Uh... Seriously, where are we going? Do I need to peek through the bars? That's where we need to go. I'm not sure how to solve this one here. Well, I mean, obviously we got this, so we need to use this for something. Oh, I see. I see. We need to shoot that. And it will unlock the shrine. But... Uh, whoa. Oh. Oh. Well, that's new. That's really new. Uh, how do we do that? Let's see if we can run underneath of it. Nope. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm not sure how to do this. Hmm. Oh. I got in. Somehow. 
I don't know how. D was I just very fast? Well, I did it. I, I'm very confused by that. Whoa. Whoa. That's the best view we've ever gotten of that thing since the beginning of the adventure. That has to be a divine beast. Also, it's not in the third area. That's weird. Yeah, that's that's a divine beast. That's the final divine beast. If I never knew it before, I know it now. But what was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted, probably by myself? Uh, yeah, the people really get angry whenever this game is spoiled. I think it's because it's, for a lot of people, it's a game that they've been able to main. Um, and in a kind of a long era of not doing that, like... Oh, this is gonna be great. I mean, if you think about games nowadays, people usually, or like adults... Oh, no, pull. They usually play, like, a multiplayer game, or, like, uh, let's see, League of Legends, or Overwatch, or Splatoon, or CSGO. They kind of main a game, and that's their go-to gaming experience. But now with Breath of the Wild, it kind of flipped it back on its head, because it wasn't always like that. For a lot of us, we would play, you know, we, we would try a game out for the first time, and it was our our first experience, you know, and we would play through it, and then we'd play through a new game, or replay through a, a story experience that we never really did before. And I think a lot of people, kind of, it resonates with their childhood. I know it does mine, considering I was, my first Zelda game was, was Zelda 1. Um, and so this, this really feels like that. It feels like a, a spiritual successor, which is the intention. But, uh... Yeah, it's it's weird how people don't main games anymore, but with Breath of the Wild, like I said, I think that flipped it on its head. Okay, let's talk to Picongo. Yes, it's nice to relax and observe the animals every once in a while. Hey, we meet again. Are you out traveling as well? I've traveled all over the world, but so I'm happy to tell you about new places if you want. If you have a picture to show me, let's see it already. Check out my album, bro. These are the ancient columns. With a shrine right next to him. If you cross the Tabantha Br Great Bridge over there, there's a large cliff to the south. The ruins are atop that cliff. Ah. I can recall that shrine you can see on the right there, too. So I'm pretty sure certain that's the place. Wow. We already have our indication of where the next shrine is. That's great. Okay, uh, I've, again, I, I haven't been recording any episodes in this batch, so I don't know where we are. But I did promise... Uh, actually, I should probably talk to the people here, shouldn't I? I did promise that I was going to go do that guy's flight thing. He was trying to study things involving flight, and so he wants me to fly, so I should probably do that. But let's make sure... Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Ah, uh, the Great Fairy. Oh, pardon me, I was lost in thought. You heard of the Great Fairy, right? The one from all those stories? <laughs> well, they're not just stories. I believe the Great Fairy is real, and I'm on a journey to find her. There's a tower just beyond the Tapon the Great Bridge. They say if you go to the top and look at the ground sometime in the afternoon, the tower's shadow will point to the Great Fairy's location. After hearing that legend, I decided to find out for myself. S but now I'm stuck here at the stable because, well, no matter how hard I try, I just know I'll never be able to climb that tower. And to think of it, I even saved up all my roofies as an offering for the Great Fairy. But you, you look like you could climb that tower without breaking a sweat. Would you be willing to make an offering of rubies to the Great Fairy on my behalf? Sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Here, take 500 rupees I saved up. It's my life savings. Just don't go running off with it, okay? Uh, thanks, Mario. <laughs> Seriously. That's Mario. I'll gladly take your money. Uh... You. I wonder if the Boom Boom Bam ghost of Tabon the Great Bridge likes the ruin. Uh, what? <laughs> Buddy, you don't know? The Boom Bam ghost of Tabon the Great Bridge. Under the bridge at the bottom of the valley, there's a ghost that sometimes makes weird noises like boom, bam, boom, bam. Just listen and you'll hear it. Huh? It stopped? Maybe the boom, bam ghost is taking a nap. And we know that, of course, to be because... Is that... No, that's not Tracy. Because there is a golfer down there. I don't have time to be drinking right now. You stay in our stable? That's nice, but check this out. Go down way south of here and you'll find a flat hill called Wash's Bluff. On that hill, there's this mysterious looking platform thingy. Me and Greggy tried all day to figure out what it does, but we're stumped. And we, of course, found that. Okay, I had a promise to keep. We have to go to... There's, there is aggro. 
We have to go to the flight thing, the tower. Uh, it'd probably be easiest just to warp up to it. Yeah, if I warp up, then I won't be caught along a, uh, a distraction along the way. And I, while I do intend to explore the Sarah's Scabalance anyway, I don't think this episode could take another sidetrack, side quest. So let's go to the tower and uh, pay that guy and then fly for him. And here we are, Ridgeland Tower. I'm wondering what the reward for this guy is going to be. Maybe a... Definitely not going to be a shrine. Okay. You, sir. Yeah. It's a legendary and only Birdman research assistant. If you want to fly, you'll need a 20 rupee liability fee, of course. I'll glad for you. Yes! I forget this guy's voice already. So, can I have those 20 rupees? That should cover the flying fee in case I have to file an uh, incident report. Alright. Landing elevation, wind direction, stamina usage. Keep all of these in mind as you would consider the farthest destination you could reach by gliding. Oh. If you're ready, let's take to the skies. Birdman research study, go! Where do I plan to go here? Obviously, that's, that's the wrong direction. I think just flying towards the castle would work. But I do want to plan it so I can get an updraft with an arrow. Okay, are we ready? Because I am too. Let's go. And we get a meter at the top. So I want to try to go near the grass again. If I can get a, a boost, then that'd be great. I don't want to be flying through this gorge because there's no grass there. Weird ruins over there. Okay. Also, it goes without saying, I probably don't want to be dropping down to get to the grass faster. Uh, if we set that on fire, yeah, that works. Come on, give us an updraft. Perfect. Uh, didn't really work. Oh, boy. Come on. Nope, didn't work. What happened? You look so confident, but you only flew, like, a foot three football fields. That does nothing for my research. I'm sorry, but I don't give rewards for poultry performance. I give rewards for poultry performance. Just try to imagine that you're a birdman, freeing yourself from the unchained the chains of gravity. And if you run out of energy while gliding, try making some adjustments that'll give you more stamina. So, are you ready? Here, take our mo take my money. Let's do this. Oh, perfect. Shoot that. Come on. Burn. No. Shoot that. No, it didn't work. Ah. Looks like at the very least I'm going to make 600. And 600. I didn't do anything special for this one. I just flew a straight line. Got 600. <laughs> Marvelous. What a breathtaking flight. I never dreamed a Hylian could fly 629.2 meters. Your methods maybe have been unconventional. I didn't see you flap your arms once, but they were effective. The field of Birdman research will benefit greatly from this data. You deserve heavy compensation for your stellar efforts. Please take this. Silver rupee. <laughs> that was the longest flight yet, but I bet you can make an even better record next time. Mm -hmm. So, if you're still up for it, no, I'm done. And I think that's it. And I think next time we're going to be seeing what this lightning is all about. Lightning and the rain. And all of these mushrooms. And actually, this probably the shrine over here, too. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode in any capacity, please click like. If you didn't, then drop a comment telling me I can make the next episode so that you would like it. I release new episodes of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild every Monday and Wednesday. And join me next time where we will go into the Breach of Demise. The coolest sounding names ever. See you guys then!